Okay, so these final two are a little bit weird because we're not super used to them. Um, so in this first case, we're saying in another experiment, the disk again has an initial positive angular velocity omega naught at time equals zero. And then we have still this constant uh, decrease uh, during the first half of the motion. And then after the second half of the time, the student starts dripping oil on the surface so that it reduces the friction over some amount of time. Um, so we want to account for that. We want to see what is going on during this change. So we know that the thing that's going to angular accelerate it is a torque, and a torque is just some sort of distance away from our axis times a force. In this case, it's our frictional force. So we know that by decreasing our frictional force, we're decreasing our torque, which means we're also decreasing our angular acceleration. So during this first part, we still have the same angular acceleration as before. It's still negative. But then over time, that angular acceleration is decreasing. So I'm going to make it decrease. It's going to be getting less and less. It doesn't say that it goes to zero. We're still going to have some friction. But it is decreasing because of this oil. So I have this straight line with then a linear line that is decreasing. So during my, if I go to the angular velocity, I'm going to think about it going backwards like that. As we start off, it's the same as it was in the first case during the first half. Oops. I'm trying to draw this perfect line. It's not working. OK, so we have this. And then we know again that the slope of our angular velocity versus time is equal to our values over here. So we see that we have still this negative slope that is progressively getting less negative. So we're going to have a starting off negative and then still negative but decreasingly negative slope. So let's draw that out. So I go from still negative. That's kind of a bad drawing. <laughs> so still negative. And then I'm going to curve it to show that I am getting decreasingly negative. It's not the best drawing, but it's supposed to kind of curve like that. It's just hard to connect it and make it still curve. But so it is going to be decreasingly negative. And that makes sense. Our velocity is going to uh, still decrease, but it's going to be decreasing at a lower rate because of that friction. So that is our angular velocity versus time graph. Then we have this last part that's kind of the, the bread and butter of this qualitative quantitative type of question. We're saying we really have two equations that we could be using to model what we just saw. This idea that when we're at this over half time, the torque is either increasing or decreasing. So we know that as time increases, the angular acceleration was decreasing and our torque was decreasing because of that friction. We were decreasing that frictional force, which means that our torque was decreasing. So we just want to check to see, OK, which equation could make sense here? Which equation shows us that as time increases, our torque will decrease? So in this first one, if our time goes up, we see that our torque will also go up, right? because these are directly related to each other. And that's not what we're seeing. Let's check the second one. As time increases, this denominator will get bigger, which means that the full quantity will decrease. And that's what we saw. So we see, OK, as this bottom denominator, this time goes up, our torque will decrease. So equation two is a better fit, because this one shows us as time increases, torque decreases. All right, so that should be good for this first question. We'll be able to talk about it on Zoom, hopefully. Okay.